called to serve. In this do or die fight for freedom. I'll give you a bigger caliber that I have and you will get a revenge. From the bunkers to the bloody battlefields left behind. Some of Ukraine's bravest are 5,000 women volunteering in combat positions. I'm a little bit of crazy, I think. Many abandoning their lives of yesterday for the possibility of tomorrow. These are some of their stories, reported from inside Ukraine. Now on Scripps News Reports, Ukraine's Women Warriors. Welcome from Kyiv, I'm Jason Bellini. It's been two years since the Russian invasion, two years of great peril and surprising victories. But in many ways, this is Ukraine's darkest hour. Cities have been lost. First Bakhmut, now Avdivka. American support, Ukraine's lifeline is on life support. Ammunition and morale are running dangerously low. In the words of the American Revolutionary War patriot Thomas Paine, these are the times that try men's souls. But as we found in two years of covering this conflict, when men's souls are put to the test, it's the women of Ukraine who increasingly answer the call. Tonight, we bring you their stories, starting with one woman barely out of high school, a soldier who goes by the name Demon. In another life, at age 19, Valentina would be a student, a big sister, an aspiring gymnast. But here we are, and here she is, in a bunker a few hundred yards from the killing fields of Bakhmut, methodically raining death on the Russian invaders. Whatever she was before the war, now she's simply known by her fellow soldiers as Demon. You're 19 years old. Yes. There aren't too many young women, I would imagine, who are doing what you're doing. I'm a little bit of crazy, I think. Demon's team fights in one of the most hotly and bloodily contested areas in all of Ukraine, Bakhmut. I'm from Kyiv. You're from Kyiv. We had rare access to this young soldier. With Russian suicide drones prowling overhead, we met here, a few miles from her position on the Zero Line, in a bombed-out theater. When an alert comes in that massive Russian glide bombs might be headed our direction... Where are we going? Bunker? The building's basement, still intact, is the only protection. It's better to wait in here. Okay. Her mortar unit is constantly targeted. They are so effective. Oh. Recalibrate, reload, Austrian. fire, repeat. Mortars protect the tip of the spear infantry fighters. Do you think that you've saved any lives of Ukrainian infantrymen? People in our job say infantry must live. Infantry must live. Yes, and I think that we did save many infantry. What were you doing before the full-scale invasion? I've been a student. Of what? International economy. International economics? Yes. And why are you doing this? I want to just make a better future. But like so many in this country where Russia has killed tens of thousands, she fights for another reason, revenge. There is one more point why am I doing this. I've been dating a boy and he had a friend and we all three were a group of friends. They died because of enemy's tank. Your boyfriend and his best and, friend. And his best friend, yes. Was he the person you wanted to marry? Yes, totally. totally. You were in love. Yes. Many people thought I would quit this job, but I was another kind of person. In fact, she would lead the team that recovered the bodies from the battlefield and returned them home to their families. How did you deal with the grief of losing him? Oh, it was so hard. I can't explain it. They was my family. And then in one moment, it all ends. 
and I didn't know what to do, really. I didn't sleep for like a week. I didn't eat for like a month. After this happened, did your mother say, okay, time to go I'm home, enough? No, she got another strategy. She's been fully supporting, like, do what you want, just want something. Because I didn't want anything. I just wanted to really lay down and maybe go to sleep for, for life. Go to sleep for life, meaning what? Meaning die. And uh, she said, you can't do this. That's my mom. That's your mom. She's so strong woman, I don't, woman, I don't know. You're a strong woman. How did you become so strong? Because my mom teached me. Demon has another teacher, her commander, call sign Witch, one of a few high-ranking women on the battlefield. I remember this. We'd already visited Witch near the front line last fall. The Witch helped me uh, to work again, to uh, fight, uh, to be strong. How did she do that? I don't know. She maybe knew something about me that I didn't, that I was stronger than I thought. In Demon's darkest hour, Witch persuaded her to return to the battlefield, offering her the battalion's most powerful shells. I told Valentina that I'll give you a bigger caliber that I have and you'll get a revenge. Yes, I'm getting my revenge. You're getting your revenge? Yes. It was Witch who first called her Demon. When uh, she's on position, she's just sitting on the chair and waiting for a, a combat task. And uh, she's just sitting, give me a task, give me a task, give me a task. In her rare hours of rest in her bunker, an incongruous pastime for the battlefield. What do you do when you're not fighting? I like crocheting. Like. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you make? Hats, sweaters, socks. A repetitive, meditative hobby known to calm the nerves, keep the stress in check. It's a way for demon to keep the demons at bay. After doing all this, what do you think the rest of your life will look like? I can't say this because maybe something bad happened to me, but I can say I will fight maybe not in army, but in civilian life, I will fight for freedom, for democracy. If I will live, uh, I will fight for it. Freedom and democracy, values worth fighting for, even dying for. And when death does come, as surely it will in this war, the heartbreaking task of finding the bodies falls to another woman and a dog named Beisha. It's an extraordinary mission to risk one's own life to recover the dead. We met a courageous woman doing just that, along with her dog, Besha. In the smoldering ruins of another remorseless Russian attack on an apartment building, Clarissa Borisenko and her Belgian shepherd, Besha, are on a mission to search for the victims who did not survive. Emergency workers bring her teams of dogs and their handlers into ground zero. The dogs know the drill all too well. Find the body, dig or lie down next to it, then stay. When you go home at the end of the night, you're not able to turn it off. Ми намагаємось відключати повністю емоції, коли працюємо. Але коли ну все ж таки не може нормальна людина не пропускати якісь моменти через себе. Коли ми заходимо і бачимо, от тільки що от людина прийшла з якоїсь зміни, просто уявити, що людина прийшла звідки там і от вона просто сіла подивитись телевізор і ось таке трапилось. Borsenko's band of dogs and handlers is called Antares, in memory of their founding canine member. 
Це перша в наша пошукова рятувальна собака. Over the past two years, the group, mostly women, all volunteers and their dogs, have located around 400 victims of Russian attacks. The search teams provide dignity to the deceased and closure to the loved ones who survived them. The dogs include Dobermans, German and Belgian Shepherds, and Labradors. Borisenko has Sparky and Besha, two beloved Belgians. The dog rescue team's heroics have earned them plaudits from around the world. Children send them drawings to honor the animals that perform the dangerous work of recovering loved ones from the ruins of war. The Army also partners with the Antares teams to recover fallen soldiers in forests, even amidst unrelenting Russian shelling. It was on one such mission that Borsenko almost lost her life. We were making plans to visit her last winter when suddenly she went silent. We later found out why. She was in a coma. Borisenko had been with five-year-old Besha on a mission to search for bodies of Ukrainian soldiers in an area liberated from the Russians. What's the last thing you remember before you were injured? She had tripped a Russian booby trap fixed with a grenade, the blast riddling her legs with molten metal. She lost consciousness before getting the answer, finally waking up in intensive care three days later. But there would be dark days ahead. The Russian booby trap left her with physical pain almost more than she could bear. At the depth of her despair, the commander who had been with her on that near-fatal mission appeared by her hospital bed, demanding to wheel her outside. <laughs> Reunited, Besha would remain by her side through the grueling months ahead as she gained strength to walk again. Just six months after her injury, she and Besha got back to work. Do you ever ask yourself whether this is a good idea to be doing this? For Borisenko, that means facing her fears, staying in the fight. In our coverage of the war over these last two years, we've reported on remarkable women on the front lines fighting for their country. Here's an update on some of their stories. We met Major Ulyana Sozanska last spring near the front lines. Until just a few weeks prior, she had served far from the battlefield as the conductor of an Air Force band. That was until a Russian attack killed her only brother. How are you doing? I don't know, actually. To avenge his death, she joined the same unit where he fought. Sozanska told us her brother's motto, a warrior lives as long as people remember him. And now her brother's photo is displayed on a huge banner in the heart of Ukraine's capital. Sozanska shared with us this photo of her new tattoo honoring her brother. In the new year, she's posting on social media photos of herself at the front, writing, never will we give up. For nearly two years, we followed Emerald, and her fairy tale journey from jeweler to sniper. What's it like to be a sniper? Very interesting job. To wife and then mother. The dramatic developments in the life of the woman known as Ukraine's Joan of Arc 
continue to unfold. She's still in Kyiv raising her daughter, and she announced on social media she's getting a divorce. She's also using her fame in Ukraine to advocate on behalf of victims of domestic violence, founding an organization with over 700 volunteers. There was an explosion. Then there's Witch. To meet Witch last year, we journeyed near the front line under constant Russian shelling. I will do anyways. Witch, a lawyer turned mortar commander, offered insight into how many women who weren't allowed to serve in combat positions before 2016 are now thriving in a male-dominated military. Very nice to see you. We had a reunion when we reported on her mentee, Demon, the young mortar woman. We're improving. Ukraine's military has promoted her again, making her one of the highest ranking women on the battlefield. Which still fighting. Welcome back to Kyiv. As we approach the second anniversary of the war, the evidence of Russia's assault is everywhere, especially the tens of thousands of wounded, helping to rebuild the bodies and minds of service members suffering life upending injuries. That takes a special kind of person. Meet that young woman known here as Unbreakable Russia. <laughs> there she is. A ray of light in a dark time. Young, vibrant, optimistic. Here to lift the spirits of amputees. They're everywhere now. Limbs lost to mines, bullets, bombs. Ruslana Danilkina brings her expertise to a rehabilitation center in Lviv in western Ukraine called Superhumans. It's one of many such facilities across the country. She's one of the humans that makes it super. Two years ago, Danilkina never imagined she'd be at Superhumans or the series of events that would bring her here. She volunteered to fight against Russia, the army assigning her a role away from the fighting, clerical work at a headquarters in southern Ukraine. But she begged her comrades to take her to visit the front line. As a radio operator on the front, she recorded her movements and moments. She turned 19 on the battlefield. It was dangerous duty, and she'd witnessed the awful destruction wrought by Russian attacks. Last February, one of those bombs would change her life forever. So what happened that day? I Afraid she was dying, she shot this video so her family would know what happened to her. At what point did you realize that your life was going to be very different? I immediately realized that I will not go to work. When I came out of the narcosis, I got to my knees, I realized that she doesn't have it. It's 10 o'clock. The pain, physical, emotional, fractured Danilkina's effervescent spirit. Then, after five operations, through superhumans, she got her first prosthetic leg. And as part of her recovery, her brother urged her to document on social media her journey, however difficult. Були дні, коли я взагалі нічого не хотіла робити, викладати і так далі. Він приїжджав, він міг навіть мене як насварити і і казав: "Давай, Руслана, ти мусиш, тобі це потрібно, ти повинна". Then she happened upon a theme. Beauty. 
and challenging societal norms on how it's defined. In her posts, a young woman showing off her prosthetic leg instead of hiding it. But I imagine that didn't happen overnight. Звісно, дуже багато сил та часу було витрачено та сліз. The woman now known as Unbreakable Russia helps those just beginning their journey of recovery to navigate the world's obstacles using a prosthetic limb. You make having a prosthetic leg look like it's not that big of a deal. Слухайте, якщо воно виглядає легко та просто, то я дуже рада. We'd already met up with Donald Kina last September in Kyiv, just six months after losing her leg, as she prepared to run in the capital's annual marathon. Ми приїхали командою супергероїв. This year, a prosthetic earns you a head start. Shortly after, the rest of the marathoners begin the race. They pass her. <laughs> Faster, maybe. <laughs> Stronger, <laughs> never. <laughs> Courage, optimism, hope for the future. If Ukraine is to survive the political setbacks and battlefield losses, it will be these qualities that will get them through. Qualities embodied in Ukraine's women warriors. From Kyiv, I'm Jason Bellini.